It's the out of this world destination that's out of reach for most of us, though not for the pair our David Pogue has been chatting with. Five. Last four, November, three, Mike Hopkins two, and Victor Glover one, took a trip zero. to an amazing <laughs> travel destination. It was 250 miles away, straight up. And resilience rises. 27 hours later, soft capture confirmed. Their SpaceX capsule docked. Hard capture complete at the International Space Station. We are looking forward to the next six months and can't wait to get started. As Mike and Victor, who also goes by Ike, near the end of their mission, NASA offered me a space nerd's dream come true, Station, a live Houston. video Houston. chat Houston, with Mike Station. and Ike in space. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station. Station, this is David Pogue with CBS Sunday Morning. David, we hear you loud and clear. You indicated that there's really no up or down. So is there any reason that one of you couldn't turn head down? <laughs> the blood's not rushing to your head, Victor? Not at all. Not at all. In <laughs> fact, it doesn't seem weird to me until I look at Hopper and go, why is Hopper upside down? Ike demonstrated how to get around. He just pushes off with his hands. And there he goes. The space station isn't quite as futuristic looking as movie spaceships. We're now going to go from the front end of the space station all the way to the back end. The space station is about the length of a football field. The US, Russia, Canada, Europe, and Japan began building it in 1998, and they've never really stopped. The bedrooms aren't much bigger than phone booths. We have them on the sides, but we also have them on the ceiling, and we have them on the deck. It's just a bag to keep you in place and a couple of laptops. Each astronaut spends two hours a day working out. There's a weight machine with vacuum tubes instead of weights, a treadmill with bungee cords, and an exercise bike. Because we're in space, we don't need to sit down when we use this bike, so there's no seat. There's a reason for all that exercise. Zero gravity life does a real number on your body. Are there any long-term effects that don't return once you've been on Earth for a while? Uh, there can be, absolutely. It is hard to prevent having some bone loss, but after my last mission, I lost about 2.5% bone density, and it took years for that to kind of come back. Mike and Ike have also mastered the finer points of dining in space. So I get a little bit of peanut butter. Most of the food comes ready to eat. Well, maybe a lot of peanut butter. <laughs> but not all of it. I can let go of my cracker, and it's going to stay in the general location. And so now I'm uh, tearing open my jelly packet. And voila, I now have a, a cracker, a peanut butter and jelly cracker. And because your inner second grader probably wants to know. A couple things about our toilet. Um, you can see there is a can here. And this can, that's where the solid waste is collected. And then the urine is collected okay, in this hose. So because we collect urine separately, we're able to recycle that urine. Yes, the astronauts recycle their pee. In space, water is a precious resource. The station's recently celebrated 20 years of being continuously occupied. What do you miss most while you're up there? I miss my family. And you know, I, I just can't wait to see my kids at the airport or wherever I bump into them first. I will also tell you one of the things I miss the most, weather. Up here, it never changes. It is always 70 degrees and there's no wind, there's no rain, there's no snow. No humidity? No humidity. I mean, it's, it's just constantly the same. Yeah. Hearing Hopper say rain reminded yeah. me, I miss the shower. <laughs> On the other hand, former astronaut Peggy Whitson sometimes misses space. After my first flight, I returned to Earth and I was laying on the bed and threw the covers off and just did the lightest push on the bed and expected to float to the bathroom. <laughs> and, and I was like, oh my, it's gonna take a lot more work to get there than that. <laughs> she spent more time up there than any other American, much of it as the commander of the space station. What's the grand total number of days you were in space? 665 days. That's the equivalent of a flight to Mars, is that right? Yes, you could get to Mars and back in 665 days. So I'm proof it's doable. 20 years of space station science have yielded hundreds of breakthroughs in fields like weather, astronomy, biology, materials, and especially medicine. Alzheimer's, cancer, heart disease, and so on. The salmonella that gives you food poisoning 
it actually became more virulent in space, and then they were able to actually develop a vaccine for that. Worms, mice, and rats are often on board too to help NASA study the long-term effects of zero gravity. They seem to like it just fine. Understanding the physics of how things work without gravity, we sometimes figure out ways to better understand how things work in gravity. But for the humans on board, seeing our home from space is always spectacular. You look out the window and you see planet Earth, and you look at it and you see how thin this atmosphere is and how delicate it looks. If you happen to be near a window and you're flying over the Sahara Desert, the whole room will get this golden glow, this peachy, orangey glow. The best views on the station are from what's called the cupola. The cupola is the window that faces down at the Earth, and it is a pretty incredible view, and it really never does get old. Talking to astronauts never gets old either. But eventually, it was time for Colonel Hopkins and Commander Glover to get back to their mission. Thank you, Mike and Ike. This is the greatest. And thanks for all you do. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Our Planet in Peril. Special reports all this Earth Day week from CBS News.